So today we're going to be looking at Avogadro's Law. Um, we're only going to do the first bit of this one. Um, we'll be looking at the harbour process and how uh, Avogadro's Law can affect um, other things as well later in another video. So today's video is this. This goes to the C3 uh, part of the Edexcel chemistry course. Now you would have met Avogadro before when we looked at moles. We know that uh, Avogadro came up with a number to say how many particles there were in any one mole of a substance. So there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles in a mole of any substance. And we can use that if we want to uh, discover how many particles there are in, say, part of a, a mole and so on. We can use that. I also want to remind you that we have this calculation uh, or equation that we use for calculating moles, which is mass over the relative atomic mass or the relative formula mass. It's good to be reminded of that because we use it quite a lot in C3. Okay, so this is what I'm interested in today, Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law says that any one mole of any gas, well assuming it's uh, the same for all gases, not quite true, uh, but for our purposes at GCSE, it's bang on. So one mole of any gas at RTP, which is room temperature, 25 degrees centigrade, or pressure, uh, and pressure one atmosphere, so the normal atmosphere of every day, assuming it's always the same. So RTP is that, so whenever you see RTP, room temperature and pressure. Uh, so one mole of any gas has an, at RTP has a volume of 24 decimeters cubed. 24 decimeters, effectively 24 litres. And it's the same for every gas. It's also called the molar volume uh, of a gas. So we could use this number, as long as the room temperature is that, we can use this number to actually try and find out how many moles are off. We collect a particular volume of gas. You've seen this set up before. Now we use this setup when we're doing controlled assessment and other things. But actually, have you ever thought how much gas there was uh, that we created? How much, how many moles of that particular gas? We can use the idea of molar volume, which is always 24, to try and help us. So the gas volume, which is here, equals the molar volume, which is always 24, to remember 24 uh, decimeters cubed is one mole, times by the number of moles that we get. So we can do a rearrangement to tell us what's there. So, actually really simple. Looks difficult, sounds difficult, but if you go back through all the calculations we've done before, you'll be absolutely fine. The key is always, never panic. What comes next? Always ask the question, where do I start? What comes next? What comes next? Stop panicking. Right. We're going to do a couple of calculations just to prove it to you. Now what you can do is, when I put the, uh, the question uh, at the top, what you can do is you can pause the video, you can write down the details, and then you can go through it step by step. Okay, I've kept the same steps as before, so you understand what I uh, have done. Okay, now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do calculations using molar volume. So this is a type of question that we'll be looking at. How much hydrogen, H2, is needed to obtain 2.54 grams of copper by reducing copper oxide? As ever, step one is always the balanced equation, and it's written there for you. Okay, so you can write these down, step one. Remember, when you're actually um, trying this for yourself, don't just write step one, write the word bal EQN, balanced equation, so you know what step one actually is when you come around to doing it. What's our next step? That's right, well done. It's to work out the number of moles of the one that we know, and we look at the question, the one we know is here. So we're actually going to work out those number of moles using the information from the question. So it's 2.54 grams, that's our mass, and then we can work out the relative atomic mass using our periodic table of copper, which is 63.5. So that gives us this total here. And then you say, I know what happens, miss. I look back at the equation, well done. Of course you do. So step three is looking back at the ratios that exist. So we look back at the ratio, look here, this is a one to one ratio. One mole, one mole, one mole, one mole. There's no balancing in here at all. So if one mole of, of this produces one mole of that, if you actually only get that, 
then naturally you think, well, I've got to have started with that as well. So this must be the equivalent. It must be exactly the same. And we look down here, and that's what I've written. So one mole of hydrogen makes one mole of car uh, copper. So here we've got 0 0.04 moles of hydrogen will make 0 0.04 moles of copper, just to really emphasise the point. And then finally, we do our simple calculation to work out the volume. So this is the moles that we've got. So looking back uh, at what we've done before, um, this is the moles that we've got times the molar volume, which is always, according to Avogadro's law, 24 decimeters cubed. So this will give us a proportion of the volume of this. So actually our volume is going to be 0 0.96 decimeters cubed of hydrogen. Remember, always good to say what it's may come from. Make sure you've got the units, always decimeters cubed, unless otherwise stated, and then underline your answer. Okay, so that's a really perfect way of doing it. So that was our example. I'm going to do another one for you before we actually go on to rearranging the uh, question. So, again, stop the video uh, and write that down and then have a go yourself. This is how you should be trying this at home. So question, what volume of oxygen is required for complete combustion of 40 grams of methane? Well, duh, okay. Balanced equation, here it is. They will expect you by this point to know what methane is, they'll expect you to be able to balance equations on your own. Um, you can do this easily, you've been doing this since C, um, C1 in year 10, so you'll be fine. Chill out, relax, you know how to do this. So, we then look at the one that we know, this time we look at the back of the question, 40 grams of methane. So here we've got the methane, mass is over the top, and then it's relative formula mass this time because it's a, a, um, it's a compound. So we've got, just I'm going to go through this just to really help everybody. Uh, carbon is 12 and we've got four lots of hydrogen which is 1. So overall it's going to be 16. So 40 divided by 16 equals 2.5 moles of methane. So we've got 2.5 moles of methane at this point. Okay, so we now have to look back at the equation. This is where the ratios bit comes in and is actually a really important step. And if anybody goes wrong with one of these, it's always because they haven't balanced their equation properly. Every time it's that. So it's always worth a quick check that it is balanced before you move on. But if we look at here, this is a 1 to 2 ratio. One mole of methane requires 2 moles of oxygen. So if we've got 2.5 moles of this, it does make sense that you need twice as much of that one. 2.5 here. It uh, needs 5 moles of oxygen. So when we've got 5 moles of oxygen, we need to multiply that by the molar volume. The molar volume is always 24, according to Avogadro's law. La la. And uh, this is what we get. Now that seems masses. Um, oh look, I, I broke my rule. Um, I haven't uh, underlined my answer. And I haven't said of what? Of O2 make life perfect. Don't be scared by the numbers when you get one of these because 24 decimeters cubed is a large amount. Um, sometimes this seems like, what, 120 litres for, for only 40 grams of methane. Yeah, it's surprising. 40 grams of methane, actually, when we use methane uh, in the lab, if you think about it, it's coming out of a gas, uh, the gas tap, we use so minuscule amounts that actually 40 grams is, is actually quite a large amount.